and I'd like to welcome you to the workshop. I'll let you know about what's the journey, but I'd like just to quickly remind. So Alexandra will be our main speaker. She's the contextualizer of the uh, little exercises we're gonna do today because we, we want to have uh, an interactive se um, session. Then we have Claudio who will be, who's the leader of the indices project. Uh, and, and we'll just uh, drive us into uh, uh, you know, a short overview of the, the output of the project. And then we have Chris who will both with Claudio take care of the participation in the chat room. So we encourage you to be very active uh, uh, in the chat room. It's also very good because we keep an historical of interventions. Uh, since it's not easy on Zoom to make everybody participate, we also have a possibility of opening uh, you, the mics, your your microphones for short interventions. So let's let's try to be uh, short as short as we can. Uh, we'll have Nadia who will be co-facilitating with me the workshop, uh, and I'm Olivier, and I, and I will be basically your be your host, right? So. Uh, I'd like to insist on the fact that we would love you to introduce yourself with a, two or three sentences in the chat while we speak. And that's good. And maybe Claudio and, and, and Chris, you can let us know uh, which countries are represented. So we don't want to go Eurovision show, but uh, it would be nice to have an idea of who's in the, in the audience since as facilitators, we can't really be uh, pending on the chat. So thanks for your attention. If you have, you can interrupt me. So uh, no, no worries. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, ask them through the chat. Or well, again, Claudio, we Claudio and Chris will answer it. And when we come to use the platform, if you have any tech uh, troubles, we we'll let you know. We we'll send instructions also on the chat. Pedro is is your man, right? Uh, so I, I believe you are now presenting yourself in the chat. Again, we we'll, we we'll keep on sending instructions. We we'll a bit like uh, it will be a bit repetitive, but we want to make sure you're not losing the track uh, since we're using a platform. The first thing we want you to do. Uh, and that means you will have to do it while we speak because we don't we can't uh, stop and suspend time. But we really for this exercise we really need you to uh, basically uh, be registered on the platform on the indices participatory platform. Uh, that's very important for us because it's part of the cosmology of the project. We'll let you know about uh, the role of, the, of this platform and what you can do with it. But first, if you do the this uh, little uh, follow the instructions that are, are shared on the chat, hopefully, uh, please uh, make an effort of registering. This is a little bit what you we expect to have. So we have this different, you know, it's kind of a journey. We took we really what we want to have is a dialogue together with you uh, on safe assessment and digital transformation, right? And how uh, you know digital transformation affects CHIs, and also how uh, the need of creating a shared shared data culture is comes becomes very very relevant. Uh, basically, when we want to talk about the social impact of CHIs, right? So we need really to make a collective effort on understanding what we call impact. There's various sessions in, in this uh, conference. So I think it's very related to what we talked to today with uh, what's, what's uh, basically discussed uh, in the other sessions. So first we'll have Claudio introducing uh, the indices project. I will do a short introduction on the what we call the democratic infrastructure, which is basically the indices platform. Then we'll have Nadia explaining the SAT with the self-assessment tool concept and how we're gonna be deploying a light version of it for this exercise for the session of today. And then as was as I was mentioning, Alexander will basically help us to go through different sections of this exercise. Uh, and we will go through it uh, from culture 1.0 to culture 3.0 to how do we as CHIs create meaningful dialogue with communities and society, right? So this is going to be the program. So I'd like to let uh, the word to Claudio. Claudio, you're very welcome to start. And, and here you go. Thank you. Thanks, Olivier. Um, and thanks to everyone. I, I saw in the chat that you are presenting yourself. We have partners from all over the world. Uh, from Europe to Brazil to the Faroe Islands, so I'm um, very happy uh, for your interest in, in, in the project. Uh, please uh, remind to, to register to the participatory platform. Uh, you, you, you can find the link on the chat, which is very important for the rest of the workshop. So let me just say a few words about to contextualize the workshop about the, the Indices project, which is a project funded by the European Commission. Uh, which started in 2020 and will finish uh, in March next year. What you see here is the main uh, the mission of the project. So to, to, to empower uh, people working in the cultural heritage sectors, uh, professional uh, policymakers, to uh, understand the social and economic impact of digitization in the cultural heritage sector. 
And uh, the, the project is basically uh, structured in, in, in four main uh, areas. Uh, so we, w w w w how, how can we do this? How can we achieve this objective? First, the first area of research is devoted to the, to the, to the research of the new methodology to measure the socioeconomic impact and the new modes of content production and consumption in the, in the digital world. Uh, the second uh, pillar is uh, devoted to, to the analysis of the uh, legal and IPR frameworks in, uh, in Europe, particularly to, to uh, valorize, to enhance the, 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 the competitiveness of the cultural heritage sector. Uh, the third main area is devoted to the development of uh, recommendations, best practices and tools uh, to facilitate the creative reuse uh, uh, consumption of cultural heritage uh, resources, and the and the fourth uh, area is uh, the um, collaborative engagement with our stakeholders, thanks to the uh, platform that uh, Olivier mentioned uh, before, uh, on which it, it is based the project. Uh, what you can uh, see here in the, in the next slide uh, uh, are the main ob um, results that we achieved so far. They are all uh, aimed uh, to people working, as I said, in the cultural heritage sector, from professionals to policymakers, uh, and they all aim at supporting uh, people in converting their, their ideas, their ambitions into digital strategies. Uh, to, um, to try to, to monitor their performance, to improve their strategies in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in the digital uh, single market. From one side, we have the so-called self-assessment tool, and uh, I, I won't uh, tell you uh, more about this because this, is, this will be the main focus, actually, of, of this workshop. You will see it in a few minutes. Then we have a learning course in the, in the, in the form of, of a MOOC, uh, which has been launched uh, a few days ago. It is, it is free. It is uh, open to every, everybody interested in the cultural heritage sector. And, uh, and finally, we have uh, a, a policy brief which summarizes the, all the main recommendations. Um, and we are looking forward to, to collect your, your feedback on, 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 on this uh, first version of, of the policy brief uh, that you can find in the project website and in the participatory pro platform in order to release the final version by the end of the year. And you find here a, a, a QR code that links to the, to the Indices website where you can find more about the project. And for those of you who are uh, attending physically the conference in, in person in Tanakh, uh, remember that that we have a, an exhibition space in the Fisberg uh, room. Uh, sorry for the pronunciation, and you can uh, go there, and you will find uh, our team that will be happy to introduce you to the project and to let you uh, play with the with the tools that we are uh, developing. Thanks a lot, Claudio. Maybe it's a good time to uh, again send again the instruction on how to register on the platform in the chat. Uh, I'm keeping on, on introducing what we call the Open Observatory. So the idea behind the observatory is uh, build a digital infrastructure that allows researchers, but also citizens to together, you know, create participatory research, of course. Uh, so of course, as, as, when you think about an observatory, you tend to think of a space with the infrastructure to study data that, you know, is, you know, really like observes a, a natural phenomenon. What we observe here is a digital phenomenon, which is basically how can we measure the impact of culture? With digital tools, but uh, basically the idea, the mindset be behind the because the platform is participants should be free to collaborate, create, and break in ways that gatekeepers to CHI institutions processes have yet to envision. So uh, we like to use this uh, this uh, uh, picture of uh, Wang Sensi, who was a famous famous female scientist from the Qing Dynasty, and she bred the feudal custom of the time. Uh, she had very uh, lots of difficulty to be recognized. So it's a big symbol for us, and she was expert to explain and simply prove how equinoxes move and then how to calculate their movements. And I think it's a great symbol of the, how the Indices project should create these type of new profiles of uh, uh, you know sci scientists which are uh, which which basically uh, uh, think culture is uh, is the tool to create social cohesion, right? Uh, talking about the the mission itself of the participatory platform is basically the 
the, the infrastructure is about building a co collaborative environment for deliberation, creation, and transparent dialogues between cultural heritage professionals. Many of, of you uh, can be uh, part of this sector, I guess. Policymakers, I hope we reach policymakers in this workshop. Researchers, many of you may be researchers too, and creative citizen and makers, because we really want indices to be an inclusive project. Uh, so basically, this is, uh, uh, if you have registered already, this is more or less what you're going to see on the landing page of the observatory. Uh, you see this uh, uh, different processes, participatory processes happening. We don't have time to dig in, into it. We dig into the self-assessment tool, but basically, uh, uh, in the observatory right now, we have different participatory processes. We have different assemblies, working groups, working together, debates happening, and various events uh, being organized, right? Uh, I'd like to stop a minute to, uh, and I'm sure you've talked about that in many, many of the sessions yesterday and today. Basically, we talk a lot about data space, but I think indices is basically built under the umbrella of open and democratic culture, right? So uh, I guess it's important to reclaim again, we need open and democratic infrastructure. So when it was time to build the uh, uh, open observatory of, this, of indices, we de basically decided to use a citizen participation platform, which is uh, originally uh, 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 created by the, the City Council of Barcelona, and it's an open source platform. So behind the indices, we keep you know, the mindset of the open source platforms and the democratic uh, uh, infrastructures, right? Just uh, so we use the same infrastructure called DCDIM. It's a beautiful piece of uh, uh, puzzle of uh, uh, democratic innovation. Just to let you know, the the Europe, the Europe for the future, the conference for the future of Europe is basically using DCDIM to have all these debates all around the world. So it's important to know that every uh, new um, technological development we do at Indices will basically be also have a legacy in the DCDIM community. And right now there's 200 organizations using it around the world. That means all the indices, for example, the SAT that we will explore today will be under the disposal of all the cities and governments using DCDIM. That's important to say. This is really a legacy message. Uh, to, to the DCDIM basic platform, we've added new ingredients and uh, we don't have time to explore all of them, but the big, you know, uh, let's say the, the, the cheer, cheer on the on the cake is basically visual data analytics, right? So what we're doing is uh, basically integrating visual data analytics culture and tools in the center of deliberation and dialogue happening on the platform. So I'll give you an example. If you create a debate on the platform on hypothesis of research, immediately this will be connected with uh, the visual uh, dashboard, which basically helps you uh, looking at papers, looking at uh, trends happening on, on, on conversations in social media while you're basically editing your hypothesis, which basically we call this datification of, uh, of democracy. And I think this is the way it should go. So basically better informed proposals, right? That's the idea behind the, the observatory. We have a great mission of, uh, you know, on making data literacy uh, uh, viable. So this says we offer examples and practical guidance also on reading the data, uh, which I think is very important if we want to create that shared culture of data. Uh, and most importantly, the, 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 I mean, the most important ingredient is people. So we call, in, the, in our, in our, you know, in our uh, vocabulary, we call them assembly. So uh, work, working uh, groups together, working um, on specific issues. And I'd like to mention, maybe some of you are participating into this European Impact uh, Community Assembly uh, with the joint initiative with Indices. Uh, and Nadia is the facilitator of, so this is happening on the platform. The platform is used to have to create uh, uh, partly some uh, new exercises for the uh, European Impact Phase 3 uh, playbook. And I think it's important and relevant to mention that the observatory is also uh, used to create and co-create. Uh, not only analyze, right? Uh, and I'd like now uh, Nadia to take the lead uh, and start thinking about the self-assessment tool. And I will just basically slightly move the slides while you speak, Nadia. Uh, yeah, so the self-assessment tool is a digital tool developed by the Indices Project using the open source platform, this CD. Um, the Indices self-assessment tool is conceived as an interactive tool where cultural heritage professionals can collaboratively learn how to convert digital ambitions into digital strategies and gather data to continuously monitor their performance. The self-assessment tool is built on the, uh, yeah, so the, sat the satellite, so which is what we're going to show you today and the guidelines for um, CHI's digital transformation um, uses the concepts that were designed in the project for the development of CHI readiness 
for the CHI readiness assessment methodology. The satellite is a tool meant to make concepts from the industry's guidelines for CHI digital transformation accessible and appeal to a public of CHI professionals as well as senior management and decision makers. And the self-assessment tool, um, this is taken from the indices deliverable for the caretakers and guardians of heritage in the CHIs. This means new ways need to be found in order to regain credibility and community support. So when we think about the self-assessment tool, this does this by being built on the platform, the Sabim, which was um, developed by the city of Barcelona to be open source, transparent, and accountable. So today we test drove the satellite, which is a series of four small surveys that where you get specific feedback based on your answers. So yeah, that which was Excellent. available today in the, I'm going to mispronounce this, the Visbook. Visbook, Visbook. Okay, Visbook. cool. Th thanks a lot, Nadia. Uh, so I'd like to insist on the fact that uh, uh, as you heard about democratic infrastructure, uh, the idea behind the SAT is SAT is itself is a process. So what we show is an iteration of the product. It's not the final product. And it's also why we do this type of session. We want your feedback uh, on how you think the SAT could be uh, useful for you. But I'd like to insist on the fact what you see is the, uh, uh, you know, the different phases of, a, of a, a, how the a SAT is, is uh, deployed. And I think it's important to, to you know, remind that it's a flexible and hackable tool So it's for the participatory platform. So basically, potentially, each one of you, as part of your CHI, could set up your own SAT. So basically what we're gonna show, you have to imagine how would I you know, use it and, and design a self-assessment tool for my own CHIs or for my network of CHIs, right? And, and currently I'd say the self-assessment tool can be implemented across the platform as a component. So you, it could be associated to a debate, a process which could be a consultation with uh, policy makers. I think that's that's the, the idea behind it. It's pretty flexible. Uh, and what we do today is basically deploying the satellite as what we call a data-informed dialogue. So we're going to basically uh, uh, call, you know, we're going to gather data together on your experiences, on your own data, but we're going to be creating a, a culture of sharing data, you know, a discussion around sharing data. So uh, this is an, what, on the picture, you can see uh, some of the indices uh, events that have happened. That's the boot camp where we really had, uh, uh, you know, these data gathered together and visualized with the peers. So it's also important for us that your creativity is applied to how shall we visualize uh, you know, the data, the impact of culture, of uh, digital culture beyond the, these official, the official visual data analytics languages, right? Which we all also use, but we know that, you know, since we're talking about cultural heritage, there's, there's a whole room to, you know, innovate on the form of how do we show data? We don't have time to do that, but this is what we, we would be expected to do while we use the SAT in a physical way. Uh, so forget about the QR because it's not working anymore. But uh, I think now it's time to share on the chat uh, the, so I hope you're all registered already. Uh, it's to share on the chat the, the link to the SAT where you see these different sections that Nadia was mentioning. Uh, so remember, check the, the, Zoom, uh, the Zoom chat instruction should be there. And if you have any troubles, just ask. Okay, here we go. I think we were quite okay on time. Uh, now I'd like to welcome Alexandra from uh, from CIFRO. Uh, she will be our contextualizer. So uh, you, normally it would be time to uh, drive you to the section one of the satellite. So the, the link to the uh, section one should be shared. So you, um, we make sure we're not lost. And basically, here we go. That's the, the graph that you're gonna show, you're gonna see on the platform. And please, Alexandra, contextualize, contextualize for us. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Olivier and Nadia. Um, so what you see here is one of our indices, graphs or charts, um, if you will, that explain one of the crucial concepts that was a basis for us in the indices project. And we are uh, lucky enough in, in the project to work with Pierre Luigi Sacco, who is uh, the author of this concept that basically describes the changes in culture, both institutional and non-institutional culture. So uh, he, um, he um, writes about how culture is changing from the what he calls culture 1.0 through culture 2.0 to, uh, to culture 3.0, which is where our, or at least some of us are now, but not all, uh, not all the institutions. So basically culture 
1.0 is the very traditional model of culture, which is mostly based on patronage. So it's typical for the pre-industrial society. So as you can imagine, back in the days, um, culture was funded by, uh, by the elites, by uh, people who owned resources and was dependent on, uh, on patronage, exactly. So this is a very traditional model that is like in many ways gone, but as you can see, these models can also like exist parallelly. So it's not like one is um, uh, definitely ended and then the other begins, they can exist in time. Uh, parallelly. And then culture 2.0 is something that is more typical for the era of mass media and creative industries. And this is a model where uh, culture uh, is still being produced by by the um, those having resources, but is, uh, let's say, delivered to to much broader audience is much more accessible. Uh, but we still like have a very clear division between the uh, the users, the recipients, and those who create content and who have access to all the means and resources to be able to create the content. And this is typical, and we still have that uh, as part of our lives. This is the, the culture of television, but also the, the Hollywood blockbusters, film festivals, Netflix, publishing companies, fashion houses. So this is the, uh, the 2.0 model and is very strongly linked with um, cultural and creative industries and with the development of the the internet we uh, we see more and more of what Pierre Luigi Sacco calls culture 3.0 uh, which is a culture where boundaries between creative creators and consumers are more and more blurred. Uh, so here we we see most more and more users becoming producers uh, and um, audiences having multiple roles at the same time. So this is a model that is more typical to artistic collectives, social network communities, heritage communities, and open practices uh, that are um, that are based based on sharing uh, resources and access. So as you can see, these, uh, these models, they exist parallelly. So we have in, in culture 1.0 model, uh, it basically uh, is typical for the, for the old days. However, the culture 2.0 model uh, is, um, is very much con concentrated on generation of economic value um, that is dominated by expansion of, of cultural and creative industries. And the culture 3.0 is actually related with what Pierluigi Sacco calls revolution. Uh, that is uh, characterized by uh, the explosion of the pool of producers. So this is uh, something that we also, as Invitas Project, would like to welcome more within the framework of the cultural heritage sector. Thanks a lot, Alexandra. Just to mention, uh, we have also case studies uh, be, being developed for culture pre zero cases, uh, such as uh, uh, Wikimedia. And uh, so I think it's important that that's going to be shared. So I hope you, you're starving for it. Okay, so I hope you're all on the, on the platform and you already uh, started to fill up the, the section one from culture one to culture three dot zero. Uh, I'd like basically some of you uh, to open up their mics and let us know where your organization activities are mostly oriented towards right now. If some of you uh, would consider they're already uh, habiting the culture 3.0, producing culture 3.0. And if not, uh, let us know how, how you would like your organization to focus more on. How would you do it if you don't do it now? Or how do you do it if you're already doing it? So any candidates, since I can't see the chat while I'm sharing the screen, maybe Claudio, do we have questions? Any volunteers? Do we have culture 3.0 professionals? Uh, yes, no, where are you? I'm looking for volunteers. We, we, we had a question in the meantime about the, the difference uh, between the original uh, self-assessment tool and the new satellite uh, okay. concept. You know, if you want to say a few words about this in the meantime. Uh, I can dig into that. And if right, meanwhile, if you're really shy, just let us know, uh, you know, in the chat, uh, if you have a uh, best practice example of, of one of these models uh, or any dApps on the models themselves, uh, let us know. So basically what we're presenting today is satellite. You have to imagine uh, it's kind of uh, diving into one chapter of the sat as a whole, right? So what you're basically doing is creating dialogues around different chapters of the full set. Uh, I hope it's an it's, it's answer. So really, really focusing on digital transformation. 
and culture 3.0 today. So let's say it's kind of a, you know, a zoom in. Uh, but again, keep in mind that SAT is there for you also to organize your own quizzes. Let's call them quizzes uh, and gather data from your organization or your network. This is also the message we want to spread. So this is what we do today is a, a specific example, but you could you could you know have different chapters and you could open up your own chapters. So do we have candidates to explain how, how good they, they perform on culture 3.0? You could you kind of tired or shy? <laughs> Any inputs? That, that's a shame. Uh, okay, so. But is there anyone interested in letting us know how they would measure this performance in this area? So what would be the indicators for you? The ID indicators, visitors numbers, social media followers, number of activity participants, uh, diversity of activity participants, which comes very, very interesting, or number of networks collaborations, or number of co-creative activities. Does it resonate to the type of indicators you should be able to deploy in your institutions? Do we have... Uh, do you have anyone to want to react on it? Or are you just focusing? Are you just focusing on on filling and filling it up on the platform? It's also that I would be happy with it. No, any insights, Alexandra? Say... Yes, please. Yeah, I, I, yes, I think uh, many uh, Wikimedia chapters, maybe, I would say that many of them uh, do record most of those, at least uh, they apply to our activities very much. And I somehow think that the question is how to go beyond those. Yes. Even, yeah. <laughs> so any any example, any ID? Um, from me? Yes, I mean, from, from the I, 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 just, I, th I thought I was posing a question. Uh, well, um, I think um, activities are connecting, well, the hybrid activities especially are connecting online as well as on-site uh, environments. Therefore, um, yeah, I think it's it, uh, the, the question is about measuring some kind of social progress. Okay. That is, that is uh, yeah, it's maybe hard to measure. So more like qualitative data, you mean, right? Uh, through interviews yeah. and through, Yeah, and I through... just have to say that I, I myself did, made the decision that I'll try to uh, quantify as little as possible. And I uh -huh. focus, focus on focus, focus groups, yeah. Okay, that, that's good to know. It's more expensive usually, but I think that's the way that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. So there's, there's different models. We don't have time to dig deep dive into it, but uh, you know, there's a social value, value integrated model, which also measures you know, happiness. And I think the, the, the happiness of uh, people contributing, collaborating, participating, uh, the economic value of uh, volunteers hours spent in crowdsourcing projects. So I think that that's a, that's a whole uh, bunch of, of uh, indicators that we could also bring to the table. Anyone else wants to react on indicators of how can we make a, more, a culture 3.0 more impactful or visible? Any reaction? Otherwise, we're going to jump into the next section since we have a straight time and we reach the time we would want to dedicate to the chapter. Yes. Any yeah. observation? Yes. Sorry, please. I was just going to say, yeah, we are at half time, uh, Olivier. Say it again, please. For the 30 minutes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. We we gone time. So let's let's open up a new, a new chapters. But uh, if you have been filling up the uh, maybe uh, Alexander, you want to tell about the recommend the main recommendation. Let's say that you get after uh, answering section one questions. You want to dig it? You know, just let us know that this empowering uh, uh, stewardship mindset in cultural heritage institutions, Alexandra. Yeah, so just very quickly, uh, within the Indices project, we also create policy recommendations. And, and this question that you've just been answering is connected with a recommendation that is one of our recommendations, uh, in which we focus on the fact that heritage professionals can also have to be ready to give up their traditional roles uh, as gatekeepers of collections and knowledge, and instead act more like community enablers. And we will come back to that uh, in our third and fourth question. Thank you very much. So let's open up the section two, impact areas of culture 3.0. So we, 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 we're digging into, into details, into indicators. Uh, so I think that's also answers the, the question that was raised. So here we go. Alexandra, 
Yes, so uh, we also, uh, at Indices, we also were looking very closely on how to measure value and impact of digital cultural heritage. And we were sure that we want to go beyond the very narrow uh, understanding of, of value of digital cultural heritage that tends to focus mostly on the economic value, because we strongly believe that the value, the, the importance of, um, of heritage, also digital cultural heritage, um, is, uh, is the fact uh, that it can have the various impacts on the social life and various uh, aspects of social life. So if we can go to the next slide, uh, we were looking into these eight areas uh, that were uh, identified as um, a sphere of cultural effect. Uh, so one of them is innovation. So uh, digital cultural heritage can have effects on uh, the capacity for creating innovative and meaningful things and practices. The, the second one is welfare. So definitely we believe that cultural heritage and also digital cultural heritage has effects on life expectation and psychological well-being. And we have, many of us have experienced that during the, the lockdowns, during the, the global pandemic, I suppose. The third one is sustainability. And, the, and within this category, we describe the impact on awareness and environmental issues. Uh, then there is social cohesion. So we believe uh, cultural heritage has also uh, impact on crime prevention, conflict resolution, well-being of at-risk groups. And then uh, new entrepreneurship models. So here we focus on innovations and creative forms of leadership and entrepreneurship that culture can inspire or that are cultural related. And then lifelong learning. So uh, here we describe effects on capacities allowing adaptation to and selection and shaping of environmental contexts. And then soft power, uh, and these are the effects that the digital cultural heritage has on visibility, reputation and influence of countries and regions, but also smaller group uh, or minorities. And the local identity, uh, last but not least, and here we focus on social and cultural foundations of places and their development. So as you can see, we tend within the Indices project to define the value uh, uh, and the importance of the of cultural, digital cultural heritage um, as something that is going way beyond the economic, uh, the, the narrow understanding of the economic value that can be generated with the use of resources. We rather want to look into how digital cultural heritage and interactions with it uh, influence the way people live, um, the way they learn, the way they create, the way they work together and what they can produce, how they inspire each other, how they live in communities uh, and how they build their local and and also like um, global identity. So that is very important for us as a model in which we understand the impact of digital cultural heritage. Thanks a lot, Alexandra. So it's time now to, uh, you know, uh, answer the questions on the on the chat. So I hope you you're there. Uh, but I'd like to, you know, let let you feed it up. And the main question here, I think, is which impact areas uh, of the one that were introduced uh, by Alexandra right now does your organization organization target? Uh, and that's the second question, which if you don't target anyone, which one is would be the priority to start? Uh, and I'd love to have uh, your ideas or experiences or depths about it, while you may uh, fill the survey. So any reaction, any questions, any doubts? We don't have time to show all the, how these indicators perform and how they're deployed. Uh, but there's papers that uh, are even about to be published. So any reaction? Any of these that seem to resonate to your practices? You're very shy today, or you're not able to open your mics, or you're too concentrated on filling the, the survey. So anyone? We'll talk a lot about, I mean, in a, in a section four about dialogues and meaningful dialogues with community. So. We guess intercultural dialogue is something that uh, the European approach is basically relate with. So what are your take? No one? Really shy, eh? It would be better if we would meet in a room. No, no one? How come? So may maybe Nadia, meanwhile, we can look at the, at the data on the platform. We don't have yet a, 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 a Mentimeter-like 
um, performance where we can show the data live. But uh, yeah, so what's your reaction? No one? Shall I, shall I mention volunteers? No? Are you very tired? Let us know what, how do you feel? Because I can't see the chat. So maybe Claudio, do we have reactions? Do you have doubts? No, not yet, uh, Olivier. Okay, so shall we go through and then maybe we wrap up at the end? Yeah, to keep on time? Yeah. It's, a, it's a shame we're not talking about dialogues, but you know, you have, an, you have the last chance at the end with section four. Uh, okay. This is the re our recommendation. What you see on the right is uh, after filling the answers that the when I did it, these are the recommendation I recited and uh, resources which are associated to them, which in that case are recommended by Fred. So in the in the near future, you'll also be able to uh, add some resources uh, and your own recommendation to the set. So um, you know if you have any ideas, if you know any resources. Uh, related to with the discussion we have today, please share it on the chat and we'll make sure we, we'll introduce them in the SAT. Uh, so, Alexandra, this is a recommendation for section two. Introduce, introduce fit for purpose impact assessment mechanisms and evaluation processes in cultural heritage institutions. Yes. What to take? Uh yeah, so I think it's very important and oftentimes when uh, when we talk to cultural heritage professionals, we also uh, encounter this uh, this challenge that uh, it's very important the ways uh, cultural heritage institutions are be like how their impact is being measured by the funders, by uh, public other public institutions and the organizers. So we do in this recommendation, we do very strongly call for different fit for purpose impact assessment mechanisms so that cultural heritage institutions can measure that uh, their real uh, true impact, not only, for example, the number of people who go through the doors of the institutions or what website statistics, but actually the, the real impact that institutions have in the in the discussed eight impact tiers. Thanks a lot, Alexandra. So let's open up section three, approaching innovation and digital strategy. So oh, Olivier, may... Olivier? Yes, yes. Oh, Olivier? Yes. Yes, um, there is uh, there is some reactions uh, from the chat and um, uh, that might, might be relevant now. Yes. So the people are puzzled by the fact that the questions are mandatory and question two allows only one answer difficult hmm. to answer in a way that corresponds to reality. And there are people who um, 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 who are uh, also feeling this. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is an issue seemingly. Okay, but, but basically that, because question two is about what's, what's the area we, you think you should prioritize, but maybe we can review that. Maybe they, they should be a multi-optional, yes. So it's, we'd have to relook at it. Thanks for the feedback. Shall we proceed? Yes, Alexandra, approaching innovation and digital strategy. Yeah. Uh, so uh, once the collections are digitized, and this is the case for many institutions in Europe, the challenge is actually to encourage people to make use of them and transform these transform these collections into reusable assets. So probably you also know that if you're cultural heritage professionals, that we tend to focus uh, and we have been focused yeah, focusing yeah, a lot on digitizing the collections but now what is important is to make sure that people can actually make use of it and that they are using it for various purposes um, and also what needs to be taken into account in the digital strategies of institutions is the user's perspective and i assume some of your institutions might already have some digital strategies some might be working on them some might be thinking about them so what we encourage you to do is also to focus on the the perspective of the user and to make sure that the digital strategy of your institutions mm -hmm. is enabling to use yeah. through user community support so it's useful to ask yourself like to or to ask um, your colleagues the, the questions about how actually can stakeholders uh, have a voice uh, in the selection and curation, for example. So when the resources out, are um, out there, 
what feedback loop there is for users um, or creators online who interact with these resources to actually influence what the uh, institution is sharing and how the resources are being shared and also how uh, can open content contribute to a more democratic access to heritage. So it's very important to include these perspectives in the digital strategy so that it's not only a strategy of how institutions is institution is internally managing their digital assets, but also what space they the institution is creating for stakeholders, users, creators, communities online to actually have a voice and, uh, and uh, have an influence on how um, uh, the resources are being shared. Yeah, so this is the, the image that describes that. So this is the perspective that we are adding the perspectives outside in. So the, the, the focus shouldn't be only on what institutions is, what institutions is sharing and how, so the perspective of in, inside out, but also the, what participants uh, can offer the institutions. And here, empowering participation, co-creative workflows, community ma management, and sustainable development are issues that we, we focus on. So we encourage you to think, to think in terms of this circle with the perspective of inside out and outside in. Right. So I let you feel section three. And I basically brought the question two to the table. Um, so what would you like your digital strategy to be? Limited at best. So because the digit you think the digital is overhyped, get started finally. Focus on strong support of internal processes and digitization, or focusing more on participation and outreach. Full circle, or it should go full circle where participant drives internal processes and stakeholders. So, do we have reaction or best practices or any dApps on how uh, the survey is designed? We should play some music maybe while you're feeling. I, I know it's difficult to both. Uh, feed it on the platform and then have a discussion. So we'll, we'll note that down. So any reaction on question two? Let us know about what your digital strategy is or should go or your experience or limitations of some of these uh, aspects. Do you measure participation as CHIs? Anyone? How? Any ID? No? Shall we ju jump directly to recommendation maybe? And then maybe you can react on it? Yes? Let me know, Claudio, because I can't see the chat again. For some time, for some reason, sharing my screen doesn't allow me to see the chat. Oh, Where yeah. We are just um, highlighting the fact that uh, this is this is uh, also a demo of the potential of the of the SAT tool, uh -huh. uh, but then er every user of the platform will be able to create uh, his or her own SAT according to the to their needs, to the to the to their preferences, and and structure it as as uh, he or she uh, wishes. Uh, also, to to answer some of the of the feedback that we received about the way the question are structured, so then you you are free to structure. The, the 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 questions and the process as you as you wish. Good point. It's, it's what we do is just an exercise and it's built on again on what some of the uh, outside outputs and the variables that we're working on. But of course, uh, it's a democratic infrastructure again. So as Claudio was was meaning, you can improve these uh, surveys by commenting them. Uh, and so we'll also send you a, a small survey after the the session, so you can you can also let us know uh, what what the improvement should be. So let's let's go. Maybe since we we run on time, uh, so recommendation for section three would be ensure the participatory character of cultural heritage institution. We'll talk uh, in a minute about uh, meaningful dialogue, uh, but focus on digitization strategies. Uh, Alexandra, what would be the, the recommendation? How can we deploy that recommendation? What would be would it become in practice? Yeah, so, so here we recommend very strongly to actually uh, ensure the participatory character of cultural heritage institutions digitization strategies, with, which means basically 
going full circle as as it was visible in the in the previous slide and actually uh, take into account the the feedback from uh, from users from communities online but also uh, uh, observe the impact and also include uh, and make sure that the perspective of various stakeholders and various online communities is also visible and within the in these as policy recommendations we also encourage cultural heritage institutions to focus not only on the communities as a whole, but also to recognize digital communities as an important stakeholder. We have seen a lot of uh, discussions lately about the importance of the dialogue with meaningful dialogue with communities. So here we also encourage the, uh, the cultural heritage institutions to focus on digital communities as well. And some of these communities are being created around digital cultural heritage resources. So this is also an important stakeholder. And within this recommendation, we focus on like uh, including that perspective in the digital strategies. Great, and then it uh, nat naturally comes into uh, this idea of creating meaningful dialogue with communities, not only on the digitization strategy, but on the impact strategy of CHIs. So let's open up this, my favorite section, I would say, since at the Platonic Foundation, we work on participatory uh, processes and civic tools. Uh, so from knowledge gatekeepers to community enablers, uh, what is the change you are proposing here, Alexandra, about exactly? Yeah, so uh, we, I think all as cultural heritage professionals or people working in the sector with the sector, we have been observing this shift uh, from defining the cultural heritage professionals and institutions as knowledge gatekeepers towards uh, an approach that can be described more as community enablers. And we believe that institutions should embrace this role. Uh, but also uh, that we feel that institutions can become more genuinely community driven and to to be able to do that, we also need to understand the users and their needs and be in dialogue with them uh, and build uh, dialogue both in the analog and the digital and following the, the democratization processes of institutions daily operations based on inclusivity and equity. We feel that institutions can become more participation participation oriented. Uh, so, uh, so and and finally, be strongly embedded in communities and respond to their to their greater needs. And that can't be done without uh, dialogue. And also, we feel that institutions need support from policymakers uh, and the sector uh, to to take to take into account the creative potential um, uh, that they entail, but also to uh, allow uh, interested parties to engage with heritage in meaningful way and uh, I think for that and we think for that institutions should uh, acknowledge their roles as leaders in creating opportunities for communities again both online communities and offline communities to get involved which means not only to just give feedback but also to co-create and actively reuse heritage collections uh, and to to manage together the collections and knowledge gathered uh, by by the cultural heritage institutions uh, and for that definitely and we feel that very strongly institutions also have to be able to experiment to uh, to innovate to take risks to invite communities to truly become community enablers and that's the the core of the meaningful dialogue that we would like to see more and this is also related with participatory processes so we we also would like to see decisions being um, being more effective by being taken uh, with communities in the dialogue with communities. Thanks a lot, Alexandra. Uh, I'm, I'm we have a question. Why, yes, please. We have, we have a question. Uh, so Marco Denit uh, asks uh, that um, uh, yeah, there is a problem with the bias tone in the questions. They mm -hmm. seem to be a bit judgmental, while the range of institutions is so wide that mm -hmm. different choices are inevitable. A more mm -hmm. neutral tone in assessing your own digital maturity would appeal more to me. Mm -hmm. that, that's a great uh, input. Thank you, Marco. And I say hello. Um, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I was just also observing that by the fact that you, you're probably filling up the survey on the platform while listening to Alexandra, I think it's also a nice combination of uh, podcast and podcast informed uh, uh, 
feeding surveys. So I think it's we, we keep that idea to uh, make it even more effective and let more room to for you to participate. So what would be your highest priority in terms of digital strategy and innovation? Capacity building, digital workflow, asset management, or life cycle sustainability? Do you have any insights? Marco, shall we change the way the question is raised <laughs> again? We really need that input. No, I'm looking at, my, at the timer. Okay, meaningful dialogue. We need to really improve that. <laughs> okay, so let's come to that simple question. It's an open question, so you don't have options. So you just have only one option. It's basically open your mic and tell us what you think about it. How does or should your organization organize meaningful dialogue with communities? Are you doing that? I'm sure most of you are doing that already. What's your experience? Do you want to let us know about a successful experience or failure or risk you've been taken and was not worth it? What what do we what type of experience do we have in the room? Please. Anyone? What's happening to you? You're very shy today, or the, your mics are not functioning? <laughs> yeah, there so, seem to be some there, there seem to be some problem with uh, people's mics. Uh, um, so they can't open them. Than, Maybe no. it's on on European us. Maybe you, do we need to activate people's microphone? Maybe if you want to talk, you can just say in the chat, "I want to talk." But before we had Susanna speaking, so that should work. Uh, let me check. I okay. think people should be able to open their mics, but I think so too. In the meantime, uh, Olivier, uh, there yes. are some people who are um, playing with the with the platform and filling the, the surveys, and that would be interested to to know how they can uh, actively cont contribute and use the platform to create their own uh, processes and 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 such like. Uh, processes okay. and tools because we we promised them that, that, that they will have this possibility so i don't know if you want uh, i i told them to to contact nadia because uh, yes she's the, the, our our platform manager but maybe you you you, you can say a, a few words so, on this mm -hmm. i'd love nadia to share the the link to the uh, post we've published uh, of the boot camp event we had last year and we're gonna have uh one internal uh again uh, on on best using the platform and, and improving it, and I'd love to have a, a you know maybe a, an afternoon where we have an online event with participants of today and really like uh, you know uh, touching base on the platform and doing more hands on activities. So I'm um, we're quite open to it. So let, let's regarding time. So thank thank you for your contribution and your will to contribute. Um, so. I think you talked about that already, Alexander. At the beginning, maybe we, you want to insist on the, on, on answering cultural heritage, institutional operational principles, and practices to support participation. So, uh, I, I also prepared a couple of examples if you want. So, do you want to add something, Alexander, about no, no, this? Please. Okay, I, cool. I think that, that was already discussed. So, please go ahead. Okay, cool. So, connecting all the, the, the different puzzle, the different pieces of the puzzle of the participatory platform, since you've been asking how, how to contribute, we have also developed uh, uh, what we call a visual analytics uh, dashboard. Board. And we had a, we have also, as we have a, a light version of the SAT, we have a light version of the dashboard where we basically are using the dashboard with pre-configured uh, research, right? So uh, what you see here, for example, is an example uh, that will be uh, soon on the platform where basically we have prepared a dashboard on data about the uh, theme of decolonizing glands, which I think is so crucial these days. Uh, so basically that 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 would be uh, another side of the platform we'd like you to explore together with us. And it's a way of creating dialogue also. Uh, and I was telling about how data can inform better proposals or better activities or a better design. And I think that's something that should be explored integrating the SAT with seeing some data about the questions that are raised. So that's the next step. I just want to let you know uh, to better integrate these different tools. So uh, really visualize more data before you answering the questions on the SAT, right? So that's that's the idea behind it. And I'd also I like to let you know about a tendency and something which we will soon happen. You probably have heard a lot about the citizen assemblies in Ireland, in France, about climate change, about uh, you know uh, really uh, themes affecting our political life. I'd like to let you know to give you an example of this de deliberative design museum uh, ID, where uh, basically uh, I do think and I agree that CHI's museums are the perfect place 
to have the citizen assemblies organized and contextualized historically, not only with data by experts. So this, this is my own recommendation to the, to the workshop. And I think this is the way we want to go. So how can we be in citizen discussing topics uh, that affects them the most in museums? So museums becoming, or CHIs becoming labs, but also being, becoming, you know, a contextualization information of the culture around phenomena such as, if you talk about this information of fake news, you know, doing simple exercises like let's see the news 100 years ago, and you see basically the titles are basically the same when talking about migration. Maybe population are different, but we do see and observe this cycle in you know uh, democracy failures and risks. So I do think that our last message for the workshop to close the workshop would be let's build more democracy uh, uh, with digital infrastructure. This should be democratic, open. But I do think. Uh, cultural institutions have a great role to play because I do think cultural culture is the only way to create social cohesion to make sure we don't have uh, uh, polarization in, in how we relate to each other. So that's that's a little bit of a positive message. So think about citizen assemblies in your own CHIs. And if you're interested in it, I'd love to create a network of different um, uh, museums that would be willing to do these type of activities. So uh, I know that we haven't have, uh, you know, follow up much on, on your own participation today. So I don't know if you have uh, last questions before we do a last icebreaker uh, um, uh, check out. So uh, meanwhile, if you have questions, you can prepare a facial expression and, and, and European uh, uh, friends will be doing a picture. So uh, I'll stop sharing. So maybe it's easier for you if I can. I'm not sure I can because my, okay, here we go. So last question in the audience. Now maybe I can see the chat and leash. Any, any last words from, from our, our facilitators from the audience? No? Are you still thinking, no? You're very shy today. How can we come, you know? It's not see a shy, it's a shy. <laughs> Many people actually are attending the conference in in the hack, so they are only in a in a in a room in a quiet room. That's why maybe oh, they're not allowed to speak. Yeah, yeah. So many many of them told told us that, that, that okay uh, so we like need more that. democratic infrastructure to to organize these but, but for, for those of you who are in the NAC, please remember that you can find Nadia and all our team members in the Facebook room where you can find the, the SAT running, the, the mock, a preview of, of, the, of the mock, and the, and the, and the booth uh, the, dedicated to the policy recommendations. So we are waiting for you there. So I'd like to really thank you for your attention. I hope it, uh, uh, although uh, we didn't get much participation, uh, we'll do better next time, but the platform is there. So please comment, uh, drop us emails. Uh, I'd like to, on the European side, we'd love to have an historical of the chat. If you can keep that, that's very important for us. Uh, and I, I would say thank you to everybody. And, uh, and yes, uh, here we go. Thanks and have fun in, in, in Den Haag. <laughs>